Hello, my name is Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install scripted on uh, COS OS using Big Bear COS OS, which is the third party app store. So, a little bit about this series I'm going over home labs or installing things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel, and let's get started. So a little bit about Scripted. Scripted is a high-performance home video integration platform, and um, Scripted can bridge most cameras to three major hubs, HomeKit, including HomeKit Secure Video, Google Home, and Alexa, and it's fast, low latency, and rock-solid reliability. Some of the supported systems are Unify, Amcrest, Ring, Nest, Google, Tuya, and Reallink, and more. So, um, this is your personal cloud uh, OS. It's called Casa OS, and um, you can install it with this command. But I've also got other videos on how, how to install it on different operating systems. So, um, the personal cloud re re reimagined, and this is the UI. Um, it's been featured a lot. And discover amazing self hosted apps uh, in the App Store. So you can connect different uh, storage systems to the Casa OS using the Files app. You can access your server anytime. This is a little bit how it works. You got your app store and you go into it and you can have one click install. And you have a flexible dashboard. So you can change these widgets and you can uh, turn things on and off you can discover new apps by going in the app store and seeing the feature apps up here and looking at these you also have a built-in uh, command line interface that you SSH into the server with the UI there you go so manage all your files in the files app uh, share files across the network protect your family's pri privacy data, and freely add disk and expansion spaces. And it just makes it to where you don't see this, you see this. And um, COS OS is fully compatible with Ubuntu, Debian, Raspberry Pi, OS, and CentOS with a one-line uh, in installation. Um, you can also get it pre-installed in your Zoom board and uh, not in Intel Nuke and uh, Raspberry Pi. So the only one that it comes pre-installed with is Zimboard. Um, so the following architecture is supported, AMD64, ARM v7, and ARM64. And here's a little bit about the apps, of what they have in the App Store. And they have a great community. You can go join it on the Discord right here. So, a Big Bear Cost OS is a third-party app store that's maintained by Big Bear Tech World and the Big Bear community. Um, so, it has quite a few apps in it, and it's growing. I did make a how-to install video down here, but I'm going to go over installing it uh, in this video, too. You will need Casa OS uh, 0.4.4 or newer. And um, so, uh, that's a little bit about Big Bear Cost OS. So, I will start on Big Bear Costa OS. There will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. And I'm going to go to App Store URL right here. And, and then I'm going to copy this URL right here. And I'm going to go over to my Costa OS and get the Big Bear Costa OS set up. Okay, so I'm going to start in Costa OS. I'm going to go to App Store right here. And then I'm going to go to Add Source. And then I'm going to paste in the Big Bear Casa OS uh, URL. And then I'm going to add. Now it says 96 apps. So Big Bear Casa OS is now in there. So we're going to go over to here. You don't see it in here yet because we got to refresh the page. We'll refresh the page and we'll go back in the app store. Then we'll go to the categories again. And then you'll see Big Bear Casa OS. So I'm going to scroll down. You're going to see scripted right here. And how you know it's coming from Big Bear OS is right here. It shows the category that this app is in. So 
Now we got Big Bear Cross OS installed in the App Store, so we can get to uh, installing the scripted. So now we'll start on Big Bear Cross OS, and there will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to it. So I'm gonna go into Apps, and then I'm gonna scroll down to Scripted right here. I'm gonna go into it, and I'm gonna go to Docker Compose. So, uh, the name of the Cross OS app is called Big Bear Scripted. And then the services, and then the service underneath the service is called scripted. And then the container name is called scripted. And then the image is coming off Docker Hub because there's no URL before this. So, and it's using the latest tag. The network host is, is uh, the network mode is host. And that means that we don't need to uh, map any ports because this container is running directly off the host side. And then the environment variables, so scripted webhook update authorization. I, I would set a different string here and a webhook update for the web, webhook is right here. And then I'm gonna set a volume, so data, app data, and then the dynamic variable, which is app ID. And the name will be that one. So this name will be, go into this dynamic variable right here. And then data. So this side it is on the host, and this side is on the container, so server, volume. I'm gonna set a restart policy, so unless stopped, so that means if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart, but if it fails or any other reason, it will try to restart. It will not try to restart, I mean. Uh, so now, logging. Um, so I'm gonna use the driver, which is JSON file, and then the max size, and then the max file. Now I'm gonna set a label for the watchtower. So com.centurylinklabs.watchtower and then .scope and then scripted. So, so, so this will make it to where this watchtower updates the latest tag on here. So if the developer like pushes a update to uh, the latest tag up here, then um, this watchtower will watch over it and then it will um, get the latest update from it and redeploy it. So now the environment variables in the watchtower are watchtower HTTP API token. So this token will be used if you actually manually hit the API server for watchtower. And then um, the it's, uh, it, it's saying the HTTP API update is true, which it's on. And then the watchtower scope is scripted. And then the watchtower HTTP API per periodic polls is on, on and it's true. The image is coming off Docker Hub, which is container watchtower, and then that's getting the latest tag as well. And then the container name is called watchtower. The restart policy is unless stopped. So if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart, but if it fails or any other, uh, other reason, it will not try to restart. And then the volumes right here, it's, it's mapping the docker.sock uh, to the docker.sock. So var run docker.sock and then var run docker.sock. This is so the, the watchtower can um, uh, have the Damien access, the Docker Damien access. And then I'm gonna set a label, so for the scripted. And then now ports are 1044, uh, 10444 is on the host side and in the container side is 8080. The command is set to interval uh, 300 and 600, uh, 3600, I mean, and then the cleanup, and then the scope is scripted. So now I'm gonna set some Casa OS specific configuration. So the architecture is AMD 64 and ARM and ARM 64. The main uh, is called scripted. This aligns with this one up here. So this container up here. And then, um, so that makes it to where the, um, the system can proxy in through the host port into the container. So now I'm going to uh, I do a description right here. So scripted and then tagline and then the developer of the scripted and then the author of the Docker Compose. The icon that I'm using is from Dashboard Icons. There's no thumbnail and there's the title and then the category. So, so this makes it to where you can always get a hold of every app that's in Big Bear Casa OS because I always set the category. And the port map will be on the host is 10443. 
So um, you don't need to set the ports up here because the network mode is set to host. So now um, scheme is HTTPS. So uh, this changes the web UI to HTTPS because that's where scripted runs is on a self-signed certificate. So that's a little bit about the Docker Compose and how it works. So now that I've explained the Docker Compose, I'm gonna go in the App Store, then I'm gonna type in the search box scripted, and then now it's coming up, and you can see it's coming from Big Bird Cost OS because it's right here in the category. So I'm gonna go into it. I'm gonna press install. And then now what this is doing is it's downloading the Docker containers for scripted plus a uh, watchtower and uh, extracting them, bringing them up with Docker Compose, and then finally letting us know if they're fully up by uh, it having to open. So you can continue in the background and wait until this is finished. Now it's checking for a newer a watchtower on the latest tag. You can see it's up now. Sometimes this gets stuck, so I'm going to refresh the page real quick. Okay, now it's up. So we can see it's open. So scripted is installed now. So we can get to looking at the container settings. So now we're going to go over the container options. So you're going to go up these vertical dots right here. And, and then you can open the web UI. You can go to the tips. So you can put tips in here. This is like a notepad. Um, so I'm going to put testing in there. And then I'm going to press the save button right here. And then you can see the container reloaded. Scripted is okay now. And it should have saved in the tips again. Yes, it did. So there you go. And then you can go into settings right here. And you can see the settings uh, for the scripted, and you can see the settings for the watchtower right here. And as I said, why there's no ports like this over in here is because the network is host, so it's running directly on the host. And um, so you're, you're going to put it right here is the 10.443 is the web UI. Should, it should already be there. Um, so that looks good. So... You can change that and you can press save. You can change any of these and press save. Um, so now you can go up to terminal logs and you can go into the terminal and you can see what's happening. You can run commands in the container. And then you can also go to logs right here. Great for debugging. So you can exit out of that. And now you, you can export the Docker Compose and then um, you can re-import it if you want to. So I'm going to exit out of that. So you can check for the current update for the current tag. It, this does not change the tag. And you can uninstall, restart, and power off and on. So that's a little bit about the container options. So I wanted to let you know uh, about the Big Bear Club. Uh, 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 you can join it, and it greatly supports this channel, and I very much appreciate it. So uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So. Let's get back to registered programming. So now we're going to show the files that are created. So you can go into the handy dandy files app right here. And then you go to app data. And then you can see Big Bear scripted right here. So this is their directory. You can check mark this. You can download, copy, cut, delete, and cancel. So I'm going to cancel out. You can go inside the directory. And, and you can get... Uh, download, copy, file, rename, cut, copy, share, and delete. This is when you click on the single files, so, so you can do that anywhere. 
and then now you can go into it and you can see the scripted.db. So we can see that the files are created, so we can move on. So now we will go to the UI now. So you can open it from here, or you can go up to these vertical dots and you can open it from here. So now we will have to accept the, um, uh, the self-signed certificate. So I'm gonna go advanced, proceed. And then now you can create an account. So I'm gonna just create an account real quick. So now once you do that, you just press log in. You can see that it's logged in now. So you can see the management console if you go in here. And you can see all the plugins that are being used. You can see the CPU usage. You can see the memory usage. You can see the RPC objects. You can also go down to devices. You can see all the devices. You can go to automations, device groups, scripts, and then users. You, you, can, uh, you can add a new user. And you can go to console, and that'll pop out. And um, you can REPL, events, storage, delete. You can go to the terminal. There you go. And then set uh, settings. So you can set your settings to your IP address for your cost OS. You can restart scripted. You can see the current version. So um, now you can go up to plugins, and you can go install. So if you type something like ring, it, it updates, and now you can press install to install it to where you can get your ring uh, do doorbell cameras in here. Uh, you'll have to put your ring username and password to complete over here. Once you do that, uh, you should see your uh, doorbells down here or your ring devices, uh, your location, and then you go in there and you see your ring devices. So that's a little bit about uh, scripted UI. So I just went over step by step on getting scripted running in Cost OS using Big Bear Cost OS. So if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or you need support, you can go down to the Big Bear community and join our Discord. There's a link in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.